Okay, our brother's uh, request that um, I be more gentle with those people who are Friday Muslims or, you know, the Juma Muslims, that shall we not look at this as being uh, a step up the ladder? You know, Iman goes up and goes down. Well, no doubt. If the person wasn't praying at all before and they started praying on Fridays, then they have made a step up. And if from Fridays they increase it, you know, to a few times a day, that's a step up. And if eventually, you know, if they're progressing like that, 100% I'm with you. But now, if they're just doing Fridays and they've been doing it for years, you see, that is just what Islam is for them. It's Friday. You understand? This is what I'm talking about. The one who, that's what he's doing. He feels, when you ask him, when you try to get down with it, Really, as I said, I'm talking about the person whose intent is what? Precautionary worship. This is not an issue of faith up and down. This person has no faith. In reality. He's only doing something in case. And they will tell you. They will admit it. You know, just in case. So, this is what I'm talking about. Of course, a person who is struggling with himself or herself, you know, to try to get back on the right path, and they start back by Fridays or by Ramadan, maybe they weren't praying at all, and they start to pray that first Ramadan of their lives. That's a step up. Then they start to add Juma. Then they start, you know, gradually like that. Alhamdulillah. You know, so I'm not, I'm not saying that every single person who, only, who prays on Friday, right at this point in time, is a precautionary worshiper who really doesn't believe. And I was just talking about the concept of precautionary worship. This is what I'm talking about. And those people who fall into the concept, that's the reality. And people need to be punk. Wake up. Because they're feeling complacent. Hey, you know, I'm doing this Friday thing. You know, I'm, I'm saved. You know, I'm, 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 I'm those, you know, prophets, ummah, I'm going to paradise. You know, the Muslims are all in paradise. All you Christians and Hindus, you're all in hell. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm only praying on Fridays. But I'm going to paradise too. Prophet Muhammad said, Kullu ummati yadkhulun al jannah. They memorized that one hadith. It's the only hadith they memorized, right? Kullu ummati yadkhulun al jannah. All of my followers, my nation will enter paradise. But the rest of the hadith, they, f they didn't learn. Because the hadith didn't stop there. Prophet went on to say, Illa man aba, except for those who refuse. So the companions asked him, Wa man ya aba ya Rasulullah? Who would refuse, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Man ata'ani dakhal al jannah. Whoever obeys me will enter paradise. Wa man asani faqad aba. And whoever disobeys me has refused. So hey, going to paradise is work you have to work for it we have to work for it it's not going to be handed to us on a silver platter the fact that we happen to be born in a Muslim family our parents are Fatima and Muhammad and our name is Ali or Omar that means we're going to paradise no that is just like the Christians arbitrary grace the Hindu is born in a Hindu family. Did he choose to be born in a Hindu family? So he's going to hell because he was born in a Hindu family and you're going to paradise because you're born in a Muslim family? We said that Islam, ibadah, is submission to the will of Allah. Can you inherit submission? Hmm? You can't inherit submission. Submission is a spiritual act which each individual has to do. Every Muslim, whether he was born in a Muslim family or he chooses to become a Muslim, he has to or she has to make the choice to submit to Allah. They may come into Islam because of the fact that all of their friends were Muslims. So they became Muslim. You know, you want to hang out you know, these are all my good friends. I like those names, Aisha, you know, Omar. It's nice. 
I'm tired of Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know. I want to change. So I'll hang out with the Muslims. I become a Muslim. Until that person reaches the point where he or she recognizes that Islam is submission to the will of Allah and they decide, I will submit, then they have not truly become Muslims. So a person may go through his or her life never ever come into that state it's just a ritual everybody else did it in the family it's a habit you know as some people i know when i first came into islam brothers from morocco they told me you know it was ramadan time they were saying you know back in morocco when the time comes to break fast we these are young guys we tell them you know back in morocco we used to break our fast with hashish You know? Marijuana. That's how we broke our fast. So what kind of fast was that? Huh? That was just a ritual. We, everybody else did it, so they did it. You know? Some of my students, I asked them, you know, in, 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 uh, in, in, in Dubai, some of my students, Muslims, they don't pray, but they fast in Ramadan. Right? So I asked them, why do you fast in Ramadan and you don't pray the rest of the year? Say, so, well, you know, Ramadan is like once a year. We can deal with that. But this everyday thing, you know, is just too much. You know? <laughs> well, because Ramadan is a cultural thing. Everybody else is doing it. It's a family thing, you know. The whole feasting, the eating, you know. The, so it's okay to do it once a year. But the real submission, which is five times a day, too much. <laughs>